talked about your relationship with Vic Fangio. Now that the game's over, can you at least sympathize, I guess, in what he had to deal with the last 24 to 48 hours, or is it too soon for that? Yeah, look, I, I think it's tough for, for all the, you know, the, the, look, this is a challenging year. I, 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 fe I felt bad for the cardboard fans. You know, it, it is what it is. I can usually say, you know, this has been the most eventful 24 hours um, of my life. Um, but, you know, when I got the call, it was, uh, it was, you know, pure excitement. You know, of course, there was nerves and disbelief, but, um, you know, the encouragement the team have gave me and, you know, guys, guys just keeping me up the whole time, it's, they made it a lot easier for me. And he was what one and nine with two interceptions. Kendall Hinton's coming in playing quarterback. They had all every single one of their quarterbacks that were out because of the whole COVID restriction stuff. So they end up starting a wide receiver at the quarterback position. Sean Payton, though, if you're looking for somebody to make excuses, I don't feel like Sean Payton's probably the guy. Man, we've been around this game a long time, and this is probably the strangest thing that I've ever seen. I mean, the fact that all the quarterbacks was out, and you had to go and get a guy off the practice squad or whatever, wherever he was at, and allow him a, a wide receiver to play quarterback in the National Football League. There's not another quarterback that you could have gone out and gotten. Uh, this is this was a really strange thing, Jack. I, I just, um, I don't think Sean Payton really empathized with anyone. Like he said, hey, everybody's going through it. This is a tough situation. But the one thing I can say about the Saints, they took care of business. They didn't go in there and was playing around with these guys. They went in there. They knew that that team was weak, and they just they, they just blew them out. And that's what you're supposed to do against teams like that. You look at Taysom Hill. He didn't have a big big um, week or anything like that. I mean, he threw one interception. He had two, I think he had two rush um, TDs, but he played solid. And, you know, you look at the young guy. I mean, that's just unfair to expect Kendall Hinton to go out there and be able to have success against who I think is one of the top defenses, if not the best defense in the league. 100%. 100%. I have so much respect for Sean Payton, though. Like, Sean Payton is just like, okay, no Drew Brees. Uh, who are we going to go with the quarterback? We're going to Taysom Hill. And then we're going to adapt the offense. Now Taysom Hill becomes like this great running back in the red zone, creating all this new offense and adapting the offense. Like He seems to me like somebody that no matter what you do, no matter who you take away from him, the only thing he's thinking is win. And he continues to win and win and win. Somebody else who is like that is Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan has no business continuing to win football games right now. He's, won, he's lost every star player seemingly on his whole roster, and he just keeps getting it done. Here he was on his star receiver, Debo Samuel, after a big one. I can't tell you how good Debo was today. I mean, it's just I always mess with him because I'm a, I'm a very soft compliment type of guy. Um, I, we've never you've never arrived. You always get better. So Debo's got a lot to work on. Um, but he's one of the best football players I've been around. I mean, it doesn't matter how good it is or how good it looks. He's going to get it done. Um, some of those plays that he made in the first half. I mean, the big run that he had on the same run that he had last time. Um, just the physicality he plays with, being able to go to him. And that's all we were trying to do there on the last drive, just especially to get in the field goal range, just throw a kick, quick one to Debo. Um, and he came through every single time. And the way he blocked, the way he ran. Um, the other time he got down there and got a field goal, I think, in the third quarter. Um, he started off with a six-yard throw where Debo ran through some people. So I love that guy. and um, But he's got to still keep getting a lot better at everything else. Hey, I love Debo Samuel, but I, I really love Kyle Shanahan. I, I think he's done a terrific job. I mean, you think about him losing star defensive players, offensive guys, his quarterback, and never making excuses, just focus on the next game, making sure that his guys are prepared and ready to go. It's been a, a, a really tough year on him, but you see he's staying positive, and he's got those guys still flying around playing. They're right there in the mix. They're five and six, and Arizona's going to probably eventually dr drop out of that seven spot. Don't trust Minnesota. Chicago, they're a bunch of frauds. San Francisco is sitting right there. Nobody's really paying attention to them. They can run the ball. They're still physical. And, you know, Jack, you talk about, if you had, let, let me ask you this. If you had an uh, opportunity, who would you t take if you had a, a choice to pick two coaches? Who are the two top coaches in the National Football League, National Football League, you believe? Wow. So I just got to get anybody? That's a heck. Any of a any two coaches, just because you know who I'm taking. I'm taking Belichick and I'm taking Kyle Shanahan. 
Andy Reid, pretty tough to pass up. Sean Payton, pretty yeah, tough to yep. pass up. I, I hear you, though. I mean, Sean McVay, pretty tough to pass up. You start going through the list, so hard to choose just two. I, it's so much respect for Andy Reid right now. It's 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 hard, though, to say how much of it is, it, is it Patrick Mahomes, how much of it is Andy Reid. How oh, much we know it, how much it is. That, we, know know? It, we know that it, Hold on, Jack. We know that it's a lot of Patrick Mahomes yeah. because he had Donovan McNabb, he had other players, Michael Vick, and he wasn't reaching this level of success. So we know the quarterback is the key. We know that because Aaron, um, Andy Reid is the same guy. But he has different weapons. He's got that quarterback. He's got that centerpiece. And he's got the best player in the National Football League. Now we can elevate it. But what I'm saying with Kyle Shanahan, you imagine if Kyle Shanahan had Patrick Mahomes and the weapons that he has, Debo Samuel and all those guys. I just, I, I give a lot of props to Kyle Shanahan. I just think he's done a wonderful job. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. But Andy Reid, I don't, I don't know that he was at the same level. I'll give you that. But he certainly didn't suck when he had Mike Vick and had Donovan McNabb. Not he was all. just always this close and couldn't break through, you know, that final barrier. Uh, but that's, that's tough. Here, here's speaking of tough. So now San Francisco has this, they can't play at home. They can't even practice at home. Santa Clara, there's no contact sports in the county. So now they're basically going to have to move to Arizona Let's just see. Let's 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 go back to Shanahan real quick. Here is Shanahan on everything that's unfolding with no contact sports and how they found out. This is some crazy stuff right here. For us to be heading out here um, yesterday and the relationship we have with them and for all of our players and coaches and everyone on that plane and our wives to find that out while we're getting on a plane um, and no one to tell us. I mean, it was just extremely disappointing. Um, I got a lot of guys here who. Um, we can handle anything and we understand how big of a deal this virus is and we are that's why we're so committed and we feel that's why um so we feel like we've done it as good as we can and not only protected ourselves but also really protected our community um and for you know and that's why we think we, we would love to stay in our hometown um where our fans want us and um, playing in levi's with no people there and only people that have been tested every single day for the last five months and um, I get it. They made that decision and we got to deal with it. Um, but for them for, to find that out through a tweet or a press conference where I have an entire plane coming up to me, I have all wives, everyone's girlfriends, everyone's family members, kids saying that what they heard there, are we going to be gone for the entire month of December? Are we going to be quarantined for 14 days when we get back? I mean, that's all we could talk about for the last 18 hours um, because we got no answers from them. And I was just very disappointed and very proud of our guys um, that I couldn't give them the answers um, and they could put it to the side and come out and play like that. I, I got so much appre pre appreciation for our team and those players, and um, I'm very proud to be those guys' coach. Well, let's start with the obvious. This is an impossible situation here. I mean, this is like you have to take them away to, to football camp or something. It's like going to training camp back in the old days. They're going to have to transport, not midseason, towards the end of the season when they're finally starting to put the pieces back together here. Take the whole band on the road. Go to Arizona. Set up shop. What are they going to do? Rent some dormitories? Like, where, where are they going to sleep? Where are they going to live? And not to get too practical, not to get too literal, but when he was saying that he had all of their wives and girlfriends hit him up, like, do you think he has, like, they all have Shanahan's number? I was, I was a little confused by that. Like, how, how was he already <laughs> talking to all their wives and girlfriends when they were getting ready to play a football game and he was still on the airplane? Or is he saying that all the players were talking to his wives and girlfriends and then bringing those messages back to Shanahan? That was the only one that caught me a little sideways. Yeah, I didn't know if the wives and girlfriends and the family members were on the plane with the members player on the plane with the, the players or what the situation was. But it's it's it is a very um dicey situation because you know you want you want to be able to be at your home situation. You want to be able to practice and be able to be at your own facilities and, and have that comfort level. And when you we when you can't be comfortable, then that anxiety um kind of creeps in and you're you're worried, you're worried about your family. And you can't, it's hard to play football like that. But like he said, he's really proud of the way the players responded. It just shows a tremendous amount of uh, mental toughness. But also, 
the way he's conducted himself in the midst of this situation because a lot of times the players are looking at the coach and how will the coach respond? What stand is he taking? Mm -hmm. And then the players will follow suit. But this is a mentally tough team. I mean, to go through what they've gone through this entire year, all the injuries, all the adversity, and for them to be in a position where they can still make the playoffs after losing Bosa and their quarterbacks and all these other guys, and it's good to see Richard Sherman back making plays. Um, pretty special. Pretty special. Regardless of if they go to the Super Bowl, if they make the playoffs, if they don't, the bottom line is this is a special year, and they will always remember this year because of the way they've dealt with this. And, and look at the amount of respect that it's given you for Kyle Shanahan with the way he's dealt with it. And I, and I feel the same way about that. I mean, he's like he's got that he's got that same character to him where it doesn't matter what you take away, all he is thinking about is win, and he's able to go win. Like Mullins comes in. And if you're a football fan that's been following the league for a while, you know that you should still have confidence in the San Francisco 49ers. That's a rare thing. That's a rare, rare thing. A lot of teams roll over, let the other team pet their belly. This is a different kind of coach. This is a different kind of team. <clears throat> Same token. It's not sugarcoated. NFL right now is at a crossroads. You have Baltimore, who's trying to play on Tuesday night football after they were going to be playing on Thanksgiving. And now they're saying it's going to be on Wednesday night football. Now you have all the players going, wait a minute, we're not going to play. We don't have a quarterback. We don't have our best tight end. We're missing about 90% of our roster, it feels like. And you still want us to go play a football game? Wait. And, and it's always dangerous if you're going to put somebody between their check and their health. And those are, those are dicey, dicey situations. And that's now where we're getting to. So this is a big week. This is a big night for the National Football League. We'll see what kind of a resolution that we come to. Uh, the, the Raiders, speaking of a big night, the Raiders have been getting hot. They had been trending in the right direction. They go to Atlanta. Maybe they got a little cocky. Here was their head coach after a tough loss. John, during the week, you, you pushed back pretty hard on this idea that this 6-4 and four team felt any different than it did last season or anything. You were talking about finishing it. Do you have any, did you have any feeling that maybe the team bought too much into that idea? No, no, no. You know, that's going to be written and talked about, I'm sure, on you know some of the, the talk shows, rightfully so. Um, we didn't play well today. Falcons are fighting for their lives. We said that coming in here. This is one of the best three and seven teams I have seen. They did this to Minnesota, uh, who was a playoff team last year. And uh, I challenge anybody that's uh, getting ready for Atlanta. This team is a very good football team and are well coached. And a big part of that, too, is Raheem Morris. I think he was on John Gruden's staff and, you know, he had these guys ready to play and this is kind of the Atlanta team that we expected. It's not the Raider team that we expected because, you know, the, the Raiders got comfortable. They let their guard down. And when you play, you beat Kansas City early in the year, and then you play them a couple weeks ago, and you you look pretty good playing them. Then all of a sudden, you you come out to Atlanta, and you completely forget how to play football. And we see we saw some things that we hadn't really seen this year um, from the Raiders, whether it was um, Josh Jacobs' inability to run the football, Two fumbles, Derek Carr fumble, pick six, Darren Waller. I don't know what's going on with him. I mean, it's just like he wasn't into it. The offensive line, it was just like everybody was kind of lazy thinking that they could just show up and that they were going to win the football game. So um, I look at John Gruden and I like him. He's an old school coach and he understands that, hey, this is one game. It wasn't a great game. We're going to look for, look at this game. We're going to learn from it and we're going to move on. And that's the type of coach that John Gruden is. But he's got to get those guys ready because young players have a the, you know, the tendency to become complacent. And you don't want that complacency kicking in toward the latter part of the season. It's a good point. This does happen in the NFL, and it, it can be a one-week thing, and then it can be, you know, next week they'll come out and look how they have right. they've, they're You know, they've been looking good, especially with a young team. We've talked about this. We've documented this with the Raiders. It's a team that's really close, but they're not at the pinnacle yet. It was a complete rebuild, right? Trade Khalil Mack, trade Amari Cooper, load up on young talent, and now those young talent are one or two years within the program, but pretty soon they're going to be three or four years or five years within the program, and that, to me, is when they're going to have their chance to really make a playoff push. I think they're probably maybe two or three, maybe two years away from the real reckoning day for the Raiders, if you will. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.